What is it, husband, troubles you like this? The trouble that you had an encounter in so long ago, but which I did ignore. You're right. Of course, my father's waited for too many years to call the crown his own. And now he overestimates its worth and makes it ruler over king himself. So Gollum-like, he craven fears to sign this bill in case the precious crown shouts weakling, traitor king. And therefore you must go persuade at once your father of the damage he inflicts. You know, I cannot make the case myself. For since mum died, he's wondered if myself and Harry are more loyal to mother lost than to our father who survived and aged. To question him on such a subject when he, I know, will be embattled and besieged, will in a second make him draw away. Instead, I have called forth Prime Minister. You mean he'll be here in the morning light? Why, no, I called for him at once tonight. Your Highness, Mr. Evans waits outside. All right, our cue is punctual as well. Go back to bed and leave all this to me. I will not go, for surely you'll be king some day. But on that day, I am as much the queen, and I do not intend to be a silent partner in that regal match. Please show him in. My will, Duchess. Before, when sleeping, did you hear a scream? What scream? A high and terrifying sound. I didn't hear a thing. A scream? Who screamed? Good Mr. Evans, what a kindness shown to rise from bed at early hour thus. I fear my family does cause you pains. My lady, I cannot pretend that, yes, my life would be a joy in recent weeks if Britain was a republic. I have heard that you intend to call together the members of the House and then propose exclusion of the Crown from making law. Tomorrow, yes. Tomorrow? What? So soon? Uh, ideally, I'd preserve our current mode, but as things stand, I haven't got a choice. Will you consider waiting for a week and giving time to let my father change? Already we have waited, and he changes not. But what if William went at earliest hour to see his father and persuade no, him? No, Kate. I can't. That's not... That's... What time's the vote? It's twelve o'clock. My Catherine, I did make it clear I'll not inflict the same division on ourselves that currently does tear at our country. Instead, I wondered if Prime Minister might have one more attempt. I cannot think that if my father truly understood- He comprehends it well. He will not sign. I have no choice. My nervous future king, you must go now and tell him what to do. It would not change a thing. He is too proud. Then think not only of persuading him, but finding lever so he must agree. What lever? Say the thing that must be said. The fact that both of us command support that does not thrice outweigh the aged king. And if we want it might begin to itch in waiting for the throne. You stop right now. I think perhaps that I will leave you both. I say what you two gentlemen will not. There is another way to solve this thing. That is the opposite of all that I believe. I'll never step across my father's right. In that case, Mr. Evans, fare thee well. Good luck tomorrow, casting off the last remains of ancient and outdated royals. I'm sorry it has come to this. I, I really am. You did embarrass him. He's fine and laughs at us while we decline. My husband, look at me. My love for you is full, and as the moment that, and as the moment that we met, I do not think you weak at all, but wrong. Become the man I know you are and act. I am not king. My wife knows not that in the years before my grandmother did pass away, she sat with me for hours at a time. And because I made a point to ask, did talk to me about what she had learned. She told me that temptation lies as royal to act and speak, and lead, and always move, when actually the greatest influence that we can wield is through our standing still. Not rash, and never changing, a great crown is made by dint of always being there. I'll keep my silence, and let life unfold. What was that? Perhaps it's Kate come back but not from her direction. Maybe some, oh God, a glimmering and hovering form. Oh, William. 
She cries my name. I know that voice. Oh, William, you're now the man I never lived to see, so tall and proud. Mom. But still the face remains the same, and there the eyes hold kindness, yes, but suffering too. Such pain, my son, such hurt. But now be glad. You'll be the greatest king we ever had. Don't go! <sighs> it... This comes from waking wrongly in the night. Perhaps some sleep will fix the problems that awake I cannot solve. Uh, so I'll to bed. But still, the greatest king. That's what she said.